Hey everybody, welcome back to Three Swords Productions. I am Steven, and this is Nathan. Tonight we're going to be doing a commentary over Garp versus Kanemon. So, I'm excited. Uh, we don't get a lot of Garp on the channel. We get a lot of Kanemon, though. So we are <laughs> very ready for the Kanemon side. I'm curious to see how Garp takes this matchup, because that deck seems like it has a lot of removal options, and it's going to need them, as, as Kanemon just provides very steady pressure. So, yep. let's see. All right, looks like we have uh, Giancarlo playing Kenemon and Nathan, you're playing Garp tonight. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm trying out the Garp deck. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, lots of events, lots of four and five Dawn characters, uh, and uh, a sweet leader ability, if you don't know. Whenever you equip a Dawn to a uh, leader or character, uh, you can give something your opponent has minus one cost uh, every time you equip a Dawn, that is. And that character does have to be a seven cost or less already. So you can't target things like New Gates or Odins or anything like that. But okay. any, anything else uh, is f fair game to lower down into your to your ability so that you can Kobe it or Sakazuki it away at a, at a nice cost. And yeah, it kind of sounds like... You know, Kinemon's gonna have some options to get around this, but not not infinite options. Yeah, o Odin is a is a is a tough spot. You're gonna need things like Great Eruption, or maybe the the was that the the one drop the the Suru is that the right? But y yeah, but Yamato is gonna have you know free reign over this card, right? Yeah, Yamato's a little tough. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, looks like Kinemon's taking first place here. Uh, first turn, rather just a pass, and then Garp on two Dawn. Uh, I do have um, the two-drop Garp. Okay. I would say most every single time you don't play this card out unless it's exactly on your first turn um, to be able to pressure down what your opponent's going on with. Uh, if my opponent does play something like an Okiku this turn, I'm going to be able to shrink it with uh, my leader ability and then be able to kill with a Garp. So playing towards those, or if they decide to play something like a Searcher, I'll be able to free blow that up. Yeah, and Kenemon comes across for six, putting you down to three already. That that one life uh, missing kind of hurts already. Yeah. Uh, Rizo hitting the table, and a card that you don't really want to remove, but uh, unfortunately it is going to be a 5k attacker, and against a four life leader, that's pretty strong. Yeah, I, th I think you, as Garp, want to keep the board uh, as clear as possible most times. Uh, you want to be able to uh, can take control of that, and even better is if I... Do uh, if I don't even if I don't attack with the Garp, I would um, likely be in range of something like a Yamato being able to really make it look awkward, anyways. Yep. So I think attacking with it is correct to take out the character that you want. Swing in for your five. Yes. Uh, so we do see Garp swing for five five uh, k here and take out the Rizo for free. Yep. Uh, thanks to the Garp leader ability. Very nice there. And we see Kenamon on five Don. Are we considering an attack for six again? Yeah, so like, no. So the interesting thing here is I did leave one Don up. Could mean any number of things, but attack for six does play around guard point, which is the exact reason I left it up. Uh, so All right. it was a very heads-up play to, to go for a 6k attack on the Garp there. Yeah, and we see the Garp go down, and uh, a lot of Garps out here. <laughs> Garp see, plays a, a Garp Rizzo and another Garp. And, and a killer on the table. Yeah. Now we have options. Uh, we can start equipping Dawn, starting, start doing things like... Uh, play the Meteor Volcano to, to kill something. We can establish something like our 5-drop Garp, be able to rest something and attack on it. Uh, all of those are, are options available to us. Kenamon holding two more copies of Killer in hand, so a little bit of a slow start here. They're going to want to take at least one more hit, uh, try and get another resource. Now, we are we do have Odin in hand on the Kenamon side, uh, but it's a, little, it's a couple turns before we get there, and we definitely don't want to bleed too much before we get to yeah. that point. Like I said, Odin is definitely one of the cards you're looking for in this matchup in the first place, so uh, reasonable reasonable that you can hold on to that card and it'll be quite good. But yes, like you said, you do need the life to be able to survive to that point. And on Garp's side, we're going to want to see uh, some Sakazuki action, basically. We need we need a way to pivot the board right now. The Raizo is not the most threatening uh, character out there, but on our side, we just have a lot of events and no real threats in hand. Yeah, um, That's going to make this all feel a little bit stronger than they actually are. And with Kenemon's hand being so dirtily like it is, that's really powerful um, that we can't really capitalize on that opening. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a pain point coming up here in just a moment. 
Yep, and I opted for a play to, again, clear the board, uh, not committing as much to myself. Playing the long game will probably favor me unless, you know, uh, they're able to find multiple... I believe Odin's there was a Porcelino in hand that is not uh, taking root. Is that a 5-drop uh, Garp in hand as well? Yeah, th those are those are both options for the turn. Okay. Um, I liked the ability to be able to clear down uh, what my opponent was doing uh, to the open board and then just hope that I can find some kind of removal for an Odin should they have that, and if they didn't, we would be in an okay spot. Yeah, so we do see the Odin come down. Uh, I thought there was uh, another turn before we needed to play that, but I think not. The Kinemon ability puts you down the one Dawn, so you'd okay. be at 7-7, seven, seven, and then you yeah, of course. Can, can cheat it out. So now we're in an awkward spot, because we don't have any removal to be able to get rid of this. Uh, like I said, the Garp ability uh, does target things that are 7, seven cost or less, so to be oh. even have a chance of killing it, we would need to uh, equip a lot of Dawn to be able to do that, and I don't have that ability, so... We are going to be going into a turn with some uh, Odin attacks, and that is terrifying. Okay, we see the Smoker come down. I would have I would have liked to see that card last turn, um, but I don't think that we had. I think this was a pickup recently. So uh, untap here with Kenemon, and we're going to go up to 9 Dawn here. Uh, so at 2 life now, the Odin is very threatening. And we, we're going to do some uh, some Dawn mapping here, try and figure out the best lines uh, before the before the turn starts. Yep. Being at you uh, can see that three kind of hovering there for the Odin attack. Yeah, a little bit threatening. Yeah, being at the the two life left, he he can definitely threaten our life total, so we do have to play around it in a way to not die to that. Go seven across the table and that's gonna be met with a guard point up to up to eight. Yep. And eleven here will not catch a guard point. Eleven will probably take my first life. I get to yeah. figure out what to do with that. And three Don taps and we are gonna see another attack for eleven here. Can we get out of it? Now, we are holding another... We're holding Red Hawk as well as a second guard point. So, will we see that to counter out? Uh, can't do both of them because we only have two Dawn left. Right. So, using something like a Red Hawk or an Impact... Or, I'm sorry, a Shockwave. Um, both fine, plus a, a counter out of something. And then, hopefully this turn we can use it to attack back on the Odin or something. Deck looking... This hand looking a lot better against, you know, kind of the Zoro style decks, uh, where you just have a lot of counter out of this attack and yeah. remove. It's a yeah. lot of efficiency um, that you're not going to get to really utilize against the Odin here. Capone going to come down, step in the way for the Odin. Yeah. And it's uh, going to be really hard to get that off the Capone, table. Capone is super good there, obviously. Uh, any large attack that I would make on the Odin now is, now is saved. Looks like and... you picked up another smoker there. Uh, yep, that sounds reasonable. Um, and a, a problem that I've been running into with this deck is there's just so many cards that don't counter out of your hand. Things like the Smokers, the Five Drop Garps, the uh, all of the events that cost Dawn aren't aren't just free to pitch from hand for counter power, and definitely is a cost. You have you have to really be playing with every single card in your hand, figuring out hey, what am I using to counter? What am I using to play to the board? And what am I using to pitch to certain abilities? And that's something I'm still really learning with the deck. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kenemon's side, we're looking at Izo. We don't really need a lot in order to get this Odin across the table. Our opponent's at zero. We're going to have two attacks for 15k. Now, looking at the Izos is a little threatening because you know that if you put... If you, if uh, Garp were to put a blocker on the table, you know, you're playing red, so possibly we're seeing um, choppers come down uh, if, we're, if they're e even in the deck. But we know, hey, even if they are, Izo's got us. So yeah, it is uh, looking like a shutout here. They are not in the deck. Um, Borsalino is probably something I should consider. Yeah. But yeah, Borsalino is obviously very good. Uh, one of the one of the best black cards, I would say. Um, but yeah, just kind of figuring out what should what should the turn look like. And at this point, it's not looking great. Zero life isn't good. Um, so something like a like an attack on the Odin and see what shakes loose. And I think I'm just trying to map out on. There's a lot of cards in hand, so a lot of a lot of different lines to think down. Also, a lot of events, so you have to really awkwardly say, if I if this doesn't work out, can I hold up all of these events um, to be able to survive through the next turn? Um, and a, a lot of them being two cost is also just like, okay, we want even amounts, but then we have the guard point, so maybe an odd amount. Right, like the events are very good when you have a foothold on the table already, yeah. and unfortunately, your opponent didn't really play a lot of characters that were all that effective uh, before they played Odin. And again, this all comes back to, you know, he played Rizo, you were able to destroy that, he played a second Rizo, and that was his, like, powerful mid-game. Yeah. You had nothing in the mid-game. Yeah. You really could not capitalize, and if you could have gotten ahead of this Odin a little bit, these moments where you're holding so many events could be the buffer that you need while you go at your opponent's face, 
Um, but unfortunately, the mid game was so dry with the Garp deck yeah. um, that you just, we just missed it. And uh, we we did have Smoker, but I think it was like a turn too late. Smoker would have been really that would have been the powerful card we needed to really put to pressure. Um, but unfortunately, it came down. I think uh, yeah. turn two too late. And we do have to count out of this. This is an attack four. I'm sorry, is 15. that seven? Yeah, fifteen. So <laughs> fifteen thousand on the Garp. I, I think we can't get out of it. We can go event event. Probably even event. Well, uh, we're holding but... six dawn open, so I I assume uh, we have some kind of six cents yeah. here, or what damage <laughs> we uh, we can get out of. And Borsalino blocks yep. just kind of forces him down that line again. We go up to ten, up to fourteen, and then you can just pitch a two K out of hand at that point. Yep, and we're gonna see Shockwave drop out. Not the card that we wanted to see in this matchup, apparently. That is a huge amount of counter power, up to 17. Yeah, a little over. I could have just pitched a 2k. It might have been better, but... Uh, Possibly out. looking at Dawn for the following turn yeah. and saying, I don't have enough for this. That, uh, so that is, that's hold, actually probably the Let me hold all my 2ks. And Luffy coming down, again, would have been a really nice uh, way to get around blockers uh, had our opponent been a little yeah. bit less. But again, just don't have quite the pressure we need. Yeah, and if my opponent had something in play like a... Like a searcher that I could have left on the table, so that this smoker had double attack. Then maybe there's a world where I can get through. Um, but that's true. The double attack there would be uh, pretty effective. Now you do have. Uh, does does smoker need your opponent's character to be, or it just needs a my, a zero? I think it needs my opponent's character to be a zero. Okay. Because you do have like lines where you play your own Tusaru and on the table and uh, tick that down. But okay. Yeah. Well, we are in survival mode here. Can we get rid of the smoker? Uh, sorry, can the smoker get rid of the Odin? I think it comes down to that. My opponent has, like, I think five or so cards in hand at this point, so yeah. they're going to have a reasonable amount of counter power. Well, from this perspective, we know they don't. <laughs> yeah, they have they have three, it looks like. But yes. three, three Dawn is a lot for me to commit on something. Like, if I were to commit three three K over, even with the smoker on the table, that's a total of, what, uh, four more I have to equip to the smoker in the first place? Five come across. This is a 10K attack on the Odin. Yeah. Um, now, should that have been a 12k attack on the Odin? <clears throat> I, my, my, my thought here is, uh, I think the only way that I could possibly win this game is if I make this attack, I play the 5 drop Garp from my hand, um, and then uh, use that to rest the Okiku that would come out of it, use the Smoker to attack on the Okiku. It's probably better to do it the other way, um, just because you would leave more flexibility up with your Dawn. Right, so you wanted that 2k over to be on the Okiku rather yeah. than on the Odin on the first attack. And that be, makes sense. I think that makes sense. I think my opponent a lot of times just like might possibly let this die, just say that the Okiku comes out of it as safe. Uh, and then I kind of do a little bit of a, a gotcha. But Yeah, no, I think as long as you're thinking about where that 2k from the smoker attack goes, then I, I think it's that's all fair and reasonable. Yeah. Right? Because, uh, you know, you don't really serve a chance of getting rid of the Okiku without, without that extra pointage right. but is it more important to get the key okiko off the table as well or uh just the odin and i think admitting hey we really need this to be in a 15 a ta 15 000 attack with the leader so that we can counter out of it is the only thing we have so yep. all right we are going to flip back over to the booth Ooh, not not the most impressive showing for Garp there, unfortunately. No, uh, I think some of it is, is a little bit still, you know, the the player learning how to how to play Garp. Okay. Not entirely the deck. Uh, like we said in the middle game, there I I didn't have any characters on board to really be able to threaten down. You Maybe didn't more have experience. many options in hand either, though. So that, there is certainly that. I think you know we would have liked to see. Uh, something in the mid game, but yeah. it does come down to maybe perhaps the mulligan was was a bit off. Uh, uh, I I, th I think I did mulligan that game in the first okay. place, but I don't exactly remember. Well, then outside of that, it's not really in your control. So yeah, it, you know. it it's definitely a deck that doesn't have searchers, and you feel it. Um, unlike all the red or green decks that have okay. those searchers to be able to fix up your hand, yeah. this is a deck that doesn't. So you do have to play with what you draw. I see. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, it, it did look like that hand was very well equipped to take down the Zoro deck, but not at all the Kinemon deck. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, it's possible that the 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 ratios are just a little bit weird in the deck and. It's also possible just the, the, the deck itself is a meta call. Maybe in worlds where you see much more Zoros than you do green, hey, then maybe this is a deck you actually consider. I think that's fair, too. And also, you know, not for nothing, like, your opponent did did find the Odin pretty quickly, so yeah. that, that didn't help either. So. Uh, Odin, like I said, is difficult, uh, so mm, yeah. um, definitely definitely troublesome there. Even if I could have dealt with it, though, because uh, I didn't have anything to outright kill it, uh, still have something to pop out of it later afterwards, right? Because yeah. the Okiku pops out. Yeah. So. 
All right, guys. Well, that does it for tonight's video. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're uh, not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. We will catch you in the next one. Good Bye, night. Everyone.